I listen to this now. Mkunto is seized where parties fighting to get former President Jacob Zuma back on the candidate list. And it's lodged an appeal now with the Electoral Court today, uh, reversing or at least uh, attempting to reverse AIEC's decision uh, ruling uh, uh, on the matter. We're joined now in studio by Dramulu and Lela speaking for uh, the Mkonto Isizwe Party. Good to have you, and thank you very much, Sophie, for, for coming in. So, you, 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 you have now uh, formally uh, met the deadline to lodge uh, your appeal, citing a number uh, of uh, reasons why you are appealing, others legal, others procedural, and, and, and so on and so forth. Let's, let, let's start at the, at the fact that you are raising the issue that you were not duly notified of the decision and 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 and, and of course the, the 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 whole process itself uh, of those who would have appealed well um, thanks for that i mean i think what's important to note is that we had sent an email yeah. to the electoral courts especially the IEC, um you know lodging uh, the fact that we are going to appeal um that took some time until we actually had to call them this morning to say, we've sent you an email, we've not seen any response from yourselves. We want to lodge an appeal. Um, we need approval uh, to go ahead and do so, such as the process and the procedures, because the chair of the electoral court ought to grant that. But um, we were granted that, and we submitted our papers. Yeah. So you, okay, let me get clarity then. Were you duly notified that there's an objection? Yes, um, we were duly notified. All right. Uh, and, 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 and what was the confusion about uh, the, the, the wrong address? Well, I mean, uh, the issue of the wrong address, uh, we don't know how they got to that uh, email address. We are info mkparty.org.za. Um, so, I mean, we, we still obviously have to understand what transpired there. But again, we, we did get the notification. All right, did get the notification. So, there are three grounds from reading of uh, Section 30 uh, of, 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 of the Electoral Act that the one can, can raise, right? This is the Electoral Act, Section 30. One is whether or not uh, you have uh, uh, signed the prescribed code of conduct and uh, you have then given them uh, a declaration that says that your candidates have all signed that prescribed code of conduct. Two, that uh, uh, they, 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 they ask, accept their nomination, so they've signed that declaration to say they've accepted that nomination. Have you fulfilled those two? We have fulfilled all procedures and uh, processes required by the IEC. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the, the other reason then is the reason of a candidate not qualifying uh, for election, to stand for, for, for elections. Uh, what, what is your big issue around that? Because it seems that is the reason why an objection was raised and why a decision was reached by the IEC uh, to, to up, uphold that objection. Well, we, we feel that uh, the IEC, <coughs> in this case, um, was putting the cart before the horse, um, especially from a jurisdiction perspective. Um, they, refer, they refer to Section 47.1e uh, as part of the reason why they want to uphold this. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's overreaching on their end because only the National Assembly can make a determination of that nature mm. as to whether, you know, President Zuma or any candidate is fit to stand in Parliament as a member of Parliament. So that also in of itself raises a number of questions on the IEC's end uh, of bias. Uh, let's, let's refer back to what transpired when a commissioner, a whole commissioner in the form of Janet Love, yeah. um, you know, on your uh, show, she stated that uh, President uh, Zuma, in effect, would not qualify. You know, uh, such utterances uh, and the fact that she then presides over as not just an ordinary member, we're talking about a commissioner here, uh, that uh, you know, then came to the t determination to uphold the same objection that she had predetermined. I mean, th that's a conflict in of itself. So this raises a number of issues um, as it pertains to the IEC's conduct, um, where she ought to have recused herself uh, you know, in, in, in that particular process. So it, it really raises a number of questions uh, on our end especially more so with uh, an entity such as the IEC, mm -hmm. which is ought to be beyond reproach. Yeah. Do, do you accept, though, that a decision to qualify, not for National Assembly, decision to qualify for elections is based upon constitutional or national or provincial legislation? Well, I mean, we, 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 what's important, I think this is what we need to note, 
procedures ought to be followed to the letter of the law. We feel that that is not the case. And therefore, even the grounds thereof uh, will not hold water. Um, one of the issues that we need to raise is that President Zuma states, uh, let's not forget there was a remission uh, as it pertains to his 15 months sentence. Uh, upon the president uh, of the country, you know, issuing a remission against that, and President Zuma having served three months, that effectively uh, concluded that his case, or his sentence in this case, is that of three months, which then falls uh, below the 12 months that is highlighted in the Act uh, that also refers to without an option of a fine. Mm -hmm. uh, so that alone renders uh, President Zuma illegible mm -hmm. to participate. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the grounds that we've raised. Um, over and above the issue of jurisdiction that I've also just touched on. Um, remember, the concept, remember, let's also understand that President Zuma was not before a court of law. And uh, Section 417E also refers to the ability to appeal on the basis of you having gone through a proper pr uh, court process. You know? So President Zuma was not before the court. President Zuma is the only citizen in this country since 1994 in this so-called democratic state with this so-called... Uh, you know, a globally recognized constitution that uh, ends up being incarcerated without an option to appeal. Remember, mm. if the constitutional court uh, uh, makes a judgment, it takes a judgment against you, which is in this case believed it's very unconstitutional, uh, uh, you don't have an option to appeal because who do you appeal to? Mm. This it's is the, the apex court. court. The land, yeah. It's the highest court in the land. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, questionable uh, you know, applications of the law here and uh, therefore it's clear that it's total bias and politicking and yeah, let's, this let's, lady let's justice let's unpack that has got bit. eyes. Let, let's unpack that a little bit. Let's, let's, let's go firstly to, uh, to, to, to what you, you, you're saying. I mean, if, if you read the, that section of the Constitution, it says um, an individual who would have been convicted and sentenced it doesn't speak about whether you've served the time or not. Convicted and sentenced, but you should not read it um, in absentia of what it, the rest of the, the, yeah. the provisions in, in that section. Remember, it still states 12 months without an option of a fine. Right. Yes. Or above 12 months. Or above 12 months. Yes. Yes. Which I've just responded to you. Yes. That in this case, uh, President Zuma, by virtue of the remission and him having served three months, effectively reduces his case and the yeah. fact that his prison sentence was three months. Yeah, a remission that's you're saying reduces based on the, the sentence? Yes. Okay, that's so what you'll be arguing. I suppose the, the electoral court will tell us if that argument is correct. Yes, the electoral yeah. court, not yeah. the, not yeah. the yeah. IEC that yeah. is overreaching yeah. also yeah. in terms of 4671E. Yeah. Right. So you, you, you are saying you'll be going to the court to argue that a remission means the sentence has been reduced? Effectively. Okay. Uh, uh, let's, let's talk then uh, about the, the other issue that uh, you, you are raising around the, 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 the fact that you, you, you are seeing this as conflict of interest in terms of uh, Commissioner um, Love being, being a part of it. Uh, right? The Commission will tell you that it's not a decision of one person. It's a panel uh, of Commissioners that are sitting and making this decision. Well, if it is a panel, it's, this is not just any member of a panel. This is a commissioner we're referring to. And a commissioner that, quite honestly, if you now, you know, in hindsight, uh, look at what she had said in January, uh, her utterances, uh, you know, totally go against uh, the grain of what the IEC ought to be standing for, independence. Mm. This is not independence. This shows bias. That means she had a predetermined outcome and a view uh, without knowing if there's even going to be an objection. Right. So it raises a number of issues to say, you know, you firstly say that there's going to be this kind of outcome, which is predetermined, clearly. Then you, 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 you sit in the same commission without recusing yourself, because now there is an objection that refers to the same uh, grounds that you referred to in the beginning of the year. You don't recuse yourself. I mean, we just hope and we wish that that is not true mm. uh, in terms of our views of how this matter has unfolded. Uh, do you think her accuser would have changed what the objection would have been? Well, we cannot uh, you know, speculate. We're speaking based on facts that have transpired yeah. before us. No, no, but I'm saying, would you, do you think the, the recuser would change 
what uh, Section 47 of the Constitution says, what Section 30 of the Electoral Act says, what Section 27, subsection 2, subsection B says. The reality is the following. She sat in that commission. She made comments even before there was an objection. That's the reality we're faced with here. The law is the law. The law needs to be applied accordingly, and that's why we're following the letter of the law. So, as to whether it would have changed or not, I mean, I cannot uh, say so at this point in time. We need to speak to what is the current situation based on the outcomes of what transpired in that commission. All right, let's take uh, the conversation a little bit further now. Joined uh, in studio by a spokesperson uh, of uh, the Umkondo Siso Party, Ntamulo Njela. And uh, they are, of course, uh, legally now uh, lodging, or they have in fact lodged that appeal, uh, having been given the go-ahead now by the IEC. Uh, and they are raising uh, a number of issues that uh, need to be clarified. So let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. I mean, it's, 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 it's your view in, in, in your papers uh, and your contention that the... The, the former president was never in a criminal trial, but uh, in, in a contempt uh, uh, kind of uh, court, uh, to, so, so to speak. Is, is it your view that a contempt of court is, is, is not a criminal offense in this country? Well, <laughs> here's the reality. You refer to a trial. There was no trial. President Zuma was not before a judge. So, again, contempt of court is not a criminal uh, act. It's a civil matter and should be seen as such. I mean, the, the, the act refers to criminality. Where is the criminality with President Zuma asking a judge that is conflicted that he ought to recuse himself in the same way we're asking for a Janet Love to recuse themselves or, or to have done so? I mean, people that uphold the law need to be beyond reproach and take these kind of things into consideration. Mm -hmm. So, me saying I would like my constitutional rights that it be referred to uh, the fact that he was in conflict and uh, pending which him, you know, recusing himself, I'll attend and present myself. Is that a crime? How can that be a crime? Is this, well, what, is this the democracy uh, uh, in the Constitution? Uh, 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 will, a willful um, disobedience of a authority like the courts is seen in the country as, as a criminal uh, offense. No, it's not. This situation was not before. The President Zuma didn't get an opportunity to present his views of what transpired. Did he? Was it before a judge? No. He was given an opportunity to do so, but... No, but not, not, not before a judge that he had requested. Yeah. It's conflicted in right. this case. So that cannot be... So he did opt not to... No, there's a procedure, there's a, there's a crime, there's a procedure that you have to follow, yeah. effectively, um, which is stipulated in the Constitution, which was not followed in the form right. of prison, in the case of President Zuma. Let's, Let's say we reality. accept that, and there's, there's, then there is, there is then a court order. A court order is a direct authority of the court. Correct. Which he still chose to ignore. But was that a crime? In this country, it is. Willful no. disobedience of a court order. It is no, a criminal but I mean, this is what, We can't even refer that to a court. Yeah. I mean, there ought to be a specific process. Um, you can't just, uh, you know, just issue a position without me having an opportunity to defend it. Yeah. That, that's where we're coming from here. Um, the legal eagles will debate that. Yeah. We're not lawyers, you and I, and ought not to try and be. But the grounds stand that there's a certain procedure that ought to be followed um, and you ought to be before a judge. And, and why is it a crime to request for, you know, that the person in this form of a zondo recuse himself? I mean, that's punitive. Right. And that's where, we, that's where we're coming from. Let, 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 let's talk then to the other issues that you're raising us in your court papers. You're, you are even questioning, I think, the third respondent's objection. You're saying it's... It's, it's forgery, it's not authentic. Are you, are you going to be pushing that particular uh, leg of your argument? Well, the lawyers know what the strategy is. I'm not going to disclose that. Uh, that will be argued in court. But do you believe where you said that the, the, the objection could have been forged? The lawyers will address that in court. The lawyers will address it, but I'm asking you as a party. I'm do you believe? Lawyer. I mean, lawyer. it's in your papers. You're, well, saying, you're saying that. Indeed, but why would I want to disclose what the lawyers and preempt what they're going to say? I know what's going to happen. I'm not going to disclose it here. Um, th that's part of the merits of why we've submitted an appeal in the first place. Let's leave that to the lawyers. The time will come when you'll get your answer. Okay, let's talk then about uh, what happens when you don't get uh, your way in the electoral court. I mean, you, you literally have very limited time to be going back and forth in courts uh, with, with this particular matter. Do you have a substitute candidate? Well, uh, we talk, we'll be talking in hindsight here. Um, but look, again, we know what we're going to do. Um, one thing that I need to make very clear 
<coughs> is that we've said as a party that the leadership of the party will not be deployed to government as in the form of ministers. Um, President Zuma in this case would be a special case. Um, well, we're here to get there, or we're here to go there. But the reality is the following. Uh, and the reason I'm raising the fact that the leadership of the party is not going to be ministers of the party, because we need to hold them accountable. That's the first thing. What is important to also note, me, with me having said that, is that even if President Zuma makes a, takes a decision, because remember there's also risks associated with him being a member of parliament, one of those being referred to his benefits, um, President Zuma will take that decision at that point in time. But it doesn't mean that by President Zuma being the president of the party, for instance, in this case, would not be holding whichever president, if there is a president that he believes is the rightful person and candidate that will represent the party and the country, yeah. um, will not be held accountable by the party. So in effect, whether people are like it or not, that are his adversaries, yeah. President Zuma will still be in power. And we'll it, drive it, it's a confusing yeah. thing, I'm suppose, I suppose, deliberately so for his adversaries. But um, what about the electorate? Uh, when, when you say this leadership is not going to be the leadership that is going to be the one that carries out the manifesto of, of, of the party, you know, so to speak, um, in, 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 in Parliament, who, who will? Well, we'll, well, there's a lot of South Africans that are highly competent. And that's the one thing about Mkonto is your party. We have got a lot of depth in this country. Um, there's a lot of people who are very highly skilled, who have shied away from government because it's so politically driven. Um, we're saying, let's give new a lot of South Africans, new South Africans, an opportunity to lead here. Uh, trusted South Africans who will be trusted by the public. Our responsibility as a, pub, as, as a, as a uh, in this case, a political party, is to come with an approach that says, we are going to hold you accountable to deliver on these policies as ministers. You see, you can't speak as a person, a custodian of the policies, and be a minister and supposed to implement it. Then you're playing, it's a referee and player situation. Yeah. So that's why the problem, that's the problem that we find in today's uh, current government. That the ministers, you know, make uh, decisions over there and then they come back and lobby their, uh, you know, their ill-fated uh, decisions within a party structure. That can't work. We need to hold you accountable. That's why they're sitting with policies that are rotting in a book instead of them being implemented. Where's the Reserve Bank being nationalized? Yeah. When are they going to join? So, you, you, there's, there's a distinction between political heads who are custodians of policy and there is uh, accounting officers who are administrators that need to carry out the things that need to be done. So, you're saying, how do you strike that balance? No, but um, there's, account okay. there's accounting authorities, and there's executive authorities in the form of ministers, and there's accounting officers in the form of DGs. We're talking about people we're going to deploy there, who are going to carry a political mandate. Remember, when you're a minister, you're there to ensure that the policies are implemented. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to hold them accountable to ensure that they implement on those policies uh, of the party that are predetermined, in this case, by the people, hence the people's mandate. So that is going to be their Bible. Uh, the, 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 the current situation where you know, uh, the ministers are lack luster because they fraternize with each other, you know, at a government level and then uh, also at an NEC level and not being held accountable in protecting each other is not going to fly. And that's exactly why we sit in the situation. And also, it then eliminates the element of corruption because not thinking that, you know, if you are caught with your hands in the cookie jar, uh, you know, your party will protect you. No, we can't afford that. We're taking a strict line of saying you're accountable to the people, we will hold you accountable uh, in terms of the portfolio that we, deliver, that we deploy you to, and you ought to deliver and implement those policies that have been requested by the people as per the people's mandate. Samuel, quick one before I let you go. The uh, issue of the protection of um, um, your uh, campaigner, uh, Jacob Zuma, uh, did you raise it sharply with the Minister of Police and what, what, what response have you received? Yes, um, Mr. <laughs> Minister Begitela called me. Um, we had uh, an interesting chat. Uh, we had to separate the difference between politics and administration. Um, and uh, he understood where we were coming from. Uh, but I raised the issue that, you know, Minister, my concern is that, you know, in as much as you are in a campaign season and you're leader of the party, making comments such as you're going to bury Zuma um, are not exactly uh, those that 
uh, in an environment that, we took, that we're in, in a volatile province, for instance, that you come from, which you made those comments in KZN, uh, will not be you know, uh, productive and conducive for what we're trying to achieve here in terms of an environment that ought to be free and fair and uh, ensure political tolerance. Um, so that was the one. And then we touched on the issue of the president's security, um, which I then raised with him to say the president's fleet, by the way, is over 10 years old. Why is the president's fleet over 10 years old? Why does the president have to find himself, his cars, in this day and age as a state president? It has to, his cars have to be uh, uh, jump-started. Yeah. What, what, what's the response? For a state what, president? what was the response that you received on that? No, well, uh, he, he understood where I was coming from, and uh, he said that him and I would be engaging, and he has been engaging. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we're going to take him to task on that and take, hold him accountable. And uh, that's the language that him and I have. Uh, we, there's no animosity. Um, we're building a relationship of engagement. But what's most important is that security of pre this President Zuma's security ought to be upheld accordingly. Tamal, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming in. Party spokesperson from Konto is Cesar. Tamal, there.